for a second. <laughs> this is going to be really fun. In fact, if you're not having fun at any point in time, just raise your hand, wave it around. We'll do something weird. Just stare on out there. So you guys have just been introduced to Jonathan, who's with Grasshopper. He's the ambassador of Buzz. And we're going to talk about brand storytelling, uh, specifically unusual ways of both engaging your tribe and building a community online. So Jonathan, to get us started, um, and, and by the way, try to keep your pants on over the next 10 <laughs> minutes because he can get a little unruly. Talk to us about just what is Grasshopper to, to folks here who don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So Grasshopper, virtual phone system for entrepreneurs. You start your business, you need an 800 local number, professional greeting, extensions, it forwards to your cell phone. Your Skype phone, right? Maybe you're just working out of your apartment in your boxers. I know you do that all the time. And uh, you need to sound more professional. So we, we help out people like Michael. Guilty as charged. <laughs> I think we've all had business meetings where we've done it in our underwear these days. So despite, despite Jonathan talking in, in rather fun terms about his product, you, you've described Grasshopper actually sort of as a boring ass product. Absolutely. Right? And so my founders are probably watching this. Boring ass product. Okay, so when you have a boring ass product, how do you go about telling the story of it and, and, and how have you gotten people to engage around that online? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have this, this motto that I, that I would recommend to everyone really, um, and we talked about it before, but it's this idea that um, your product's probably not that interesting, right? You can write a press release, you can put as many buzzwords, whatever you want in it, but just assume that it's not that interesting. And so how can you help people, how can you help your customers, potential customers, your audience, how can you help these people with things that have nothing to do with your product? Right? How can you give them feedback about their website? Make an introduction for them that might be valuable. Maybe you're working with someone in the media and you can introduce them to someone in the media, right? How can you help people outside of your product that might create a memorable relationship? A story that they can then tell someone about your brand that'll make that person want to check out your brand. Yeah, so I, I think this, there's an interesting theme you're touching on here and probably want to give, give folks a couple examples of this in action. Um, I, I know the way you and I met was very much this sort of at play, the way you just reached out to me out of the blue and you had a whole bunch of contrarian advice to me by email and I was like, who is this dude? But you know what? Wow. He, he actually took the time, he really spent some time thoughtfully to talk about what he liked and what he didn't like about my website and he's the ambassador of Buzz for Grasshopper. Like it, you, you play a little bit with almost like little dissonance of like you make people sort of stop in their tracks and go, oh. Wait, th this isn't business as usual. Um, you, you, I remember you, you told me a story recently about somebody who was uh, setting up their grasshopper late at night. Uh, and and yeah. how did, so how, how yeah, did the so, story flow from there? So, so very simply, right? Like I, I just want to establish one thing. Um, social media, I think it's kind of bullshit. Um, <laughs> and, and I apologize for being so direct with that. Um, but the point is that you're not going to really build any level of any relationship on social media. As long as it's going to take you to send that tweet, or as long as it's going to take you to take that action, is probably how memorable it is, right? Um, and so the story he's talking about is we had this gentleman, Patton Gleason. Uh, he was a typical entrepreneur setting up his QuickBooks, his grasshopper at like midnight on a Saturday, um, like all of us other cool entrepreneurs. And I just reached out to him. I was like, hey, man, that sounds like a really fun Saturday night. Like, would love to connect with you at some point when you, when you have some time. He was driving to a conference and just called me and talked to me for 30 minutes while he was driving. And he told me about his story as an entrepreneur. So just think about that for a moment, right? Um, your story as an entrepreneur is one of the most intimate things that you have. And when you share that with someone and someone listens, and they're not selling you anything and they just listen to your story, that's so memorable, right? That relationship lasts for so long. And so I was listening to him and he happened to have a natural running shoe store. I know my boss is really into running and all that sort of thing. So I told him about the website and he's like, you know what, I know someone who actually makes natural running shoes. So we took three minutes. We connected those two people via email. They didn't even end up doing business together, but the fact that their boring ass virtual phone system provider would think to make a connection for them that could help their business was amazing. And when anything ever happens, when we ever have a problem at Grasshopper, you better believe who is on the front line protecting us, right? Patton, because we took a minute to listen to his story. Well, so Grasshopper, you, in many ways, you've sort of defined yourself around entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Right? Um, now, so the, the way that you like listen to people's stories, like what, it, what is it that, that you guys look for in the story and how, like that whole process? Because some, some people might say, well, I mean, what, what you do sounds like it takes a lot of time and energy. 
you know, I mean, is that, is that something that's even scalable? How, how have you guys managed that conversation? Yeah, so it's a huge criticism, right? The two criticisms are it's not scalable and you can't track it. Um, and that's fine, right? Like there's, there's, critics, there's critics out there for all those things. Uh, but let me give you another example. Examples and stories are awesome. Um, so this guy wrote a blog post about us. He's a customer. His blog, no way, gets more than 250 readers, right? It's not even on the map as far as anyone's concerned. We just tracked Google Alerts. We saw it. We sent him three homemade cookies, right? Let's talk about Doubletree for a second. Like, hell yeah, we sent him three homemade cookies, which probably cost me, no, I know how much it cost me. It cost me $12. $12 in under five minutes of my time to send this guy three cookies and just be like, listen, man, we're listening, and shit, we really appreciate you taking the time to write about us. He went berserk. He wrote, like, you know, all these blog posts about us, told multiple people about our product, and it's just this idea that, like, it's probably, it doesn't seem scalable on the surface, but he knows 10 entrepreneurs. Word of mouth converts to 20%. That's a fact, right? So taking the time to build an army of brand loyalists to build this unbiased sales force, these people who love you not only because of your product, but because of who you are as a brand and who you are as people, um, they'll sell your product for you, right? So it's much more scalable than you think on the surface. And, and to that point, I think, Jonathan, I mean, you told me you've got something like 40,000 customers, right? Absolutely. And, and how many sales and business development folks do you have? Zero. Zero salespeople. The closest we have is we have a support team that's speaks English, and available 24-7, no salespeople. And over the last three years, you've gotten a lot of press for Grasshopper, yep. right? Sort of applying these non-traditional ways. How many press mentions and, and how many of them are about the product? Yeah, so uh, I think over 550 press mentions in the last two and a half years. Um, and that's not bad for someone who's never written a press release. Hell yeah, right? Press releases are terrible. I've never written a press release and we're not a huge brand. Um, but we've done it because we've, we, we've talked about things that help entrepreneurs. So if we made a mistake, right, like we created a product called Spreadable and it lost $500,000 and that was terrible, right? And instead of just wiping it under the carpet, we wrote a case study about it. And we went out there and we talked at conferences and we talked about, here's what we did. Here are the mistakes that we made. Don't make the same mistakes. And it doesn't even have anything to do with Grasshopper, right? It's this product that's dead that no one can pay for, but we went out there and we shared the mistakes that we made because that's who we are, right? That's how we associate ourselves with entrepreneurship. That's why we become this friendly brand. And, that's a, and the bottom line is, is how, how many times can someone write about virtual phone systems? 10, 15 times? It's exciting for a month, a month and a half? And then what? You need something else to talk about, right? So, so start talking about the things that are going on in your day to day, the decisions you're making in your business, right? Your wins and your losses. So two, two quick things. Uh, one is, Talk to us, I know on your website, instead of testimonials, you guys do something else um, in terms of featuring customers. How do you guys do that? This is the coolest thing, um, and, I, and I hope everyone can learn from this. So we have a, a tab, one of our four main tabs, which speaks volumes, and it's called Happy Customers. And they don't talk about the product. It's a picture of our customer. It says where they're from, how many employees they have. It just says what their business does, and then provides a link. And that is it. Nothing to do with our product at all. And the craziest part is, we did an A-B test, and it increased conversion, a noticeable amount, because people felt like they could relate to someone on this page. And so it actually sold our product for us, and we didn't have to be salesy, which is the coolest thing. And the last coolest thing I have to tell this story is, is that we had a customer email me the other day titled Cool Story, and literally someone contacted him because he saw his business on the Happy Customer page, showed up at his office, and knocked on the door and asked if he could show him what Grasshopper was. What? And the guy actually let him into the office not even knowing who he was, a complete stranger, and showed him what Grasshopper is, right? That's like an emotional connection to a boring-ass product, if you ask me. Well, there you have it, everybody. Some non-conventional ways <laughs> to think about social media and brand storytelling, especially when you have a boring-ass product. I'm Michael Margolis, founder of Get Story. This is Jonathan Kay, ambassador for Grasshopper, and uh, thanks for uh, listening. <laughs>